Oh yeah, there she is. Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here from Moss Pawn and Gun. Today we're going to be talking about another military uh, surplus rifle. Well, if you could call it a military rifle, it's actually a civilian uh, market import uh, SKS here. This one's Chinese, made by the Norinco factory. Uh, this particular one was intended strictly for commercial export. The, the PLA needed a ton of guns back in the 50s with the Type 56, and it's estimated that over 8 million of the guns were produced. Uh, and that's just the military model you see back there. You'll see a, a couple of close-up shots of the two. Uh, I brought out my military model to compare them for you guys. As many of you know, it's a uh, very new, unique rifle, 10 shot, uh, end block style magazine that's intended to be loaded with stripper clips, 10 rounds of 762 by 39 millimeter. This particular ammo is a 124 grain Wolf hollow point. That's what we're gonna be running through the gun today. Uh, this particular one, the reason I wanted to showcase it is because it's actually in some pretty nice shape. Uh, it's not common to find uh, some of the early, uh, you know, pre-Clinton ban uh, SKS commercial import guns. They're just not out there, and, and when they are, they're usually chopped up. People put replacement stocks on them, replacement hardware, and don't get me wrong, you know, I've, I've got a couple of SKSs that are set up kind of tactical, and they're kind of, you know, decked out and all that sort of thing, but when you come across a nice example, sometimes it's just a good idea to kind of leave it alone and let it mellow. Uh, this particular gun, all matching numbers. There are a few features that set this particular firearm apart from others uh, out there that are like it. Uh, one way you can tell a commercial gun from a military gun right out the gate uh, is going to be the spike bayonet instead of a blade bayonet. A State Arsenal 26 gun, like you would see uh, some of the, uh, the actual military guns, uh, they're going to have a blade bayonet. This gun has a spike bayonet. Um, pretty standard fare on the sights, just like most military rifles. Uh, tangent sights, just like you'd see on a Mauser, AK-47, just about any type of military rifle with a uh, deep U notch in the rear sight and just a simple front post that's adjustable for elevation and windage. The rear sights are adjustable for obviously your trajectory, your elevation. Um, another thing that sets this gun apart from what you're gonna see with, with most other guns uh, that you're gonna find, when you find an Norinco SKS, it's normally gonna be kind of beat up and most of them get road hard, put up wet. Uh, this particular one does have a Bakelite uh, handguard, which is a very early style of handguard. Um, also, the way that the sling is captured actually uses like uh, sort of like a little spring mechanism that they, they run through there, and it just holds the sling in place like such. Pretty standard fare. Um, the colors of the stocks are generally going to be a little bit lighter on the commercial version. Uh, the military guns are usually oil soaked pretty heavy. They're going to have a darker appearance. Uh, but to load the gun, your safety is located over here. Just flips forward. Um, those of you that are young enough to know what an M79 grenade launcher is, uh, you know that the safety on this gun is pretty much exactly like an M79. It just goes forward, okay, just like that. Flips up for safe, down for fire. The whole idea is, you know, you need to go shoot the gun, safety down, safety down. See what I mean? It's a natural motion to flip the safety down and squeeze the trigger in one motion. So in a stressful environment, I guess a soldier would be able to, you know, get the gun off safe in a hurry and shoot it. There's a stripper clip guide that's machined into the bolt carrier. You just put the stripper clip down in there and push it home. That one's nice and smooth. Uh, the operating rod is an integral part of the bolt carrier. Pull rearward till it clicks and let go. The gun's ready to fire. You know, used to, you could buy these things for about $79 a piece. And uh, <laughs> a lot of ranch guys would use them, hunters, basically anybody that wanted a, a, a light, smooth handling carbine uh, in a nice hard hitting cartridge for not a lot of money were able to get a good little gun. Some folks don't like them because they're all communists and stuff, but you know, I don't mind my communist rifles here. Um, but they were banned uh, from importation. Uh, now they can get them in Canada still. Uh, they get um, M14s, SKSs from Norinco uh, up in Canada, uh, but us here, unfortunately, we have to rely on the ones that are here and that's it. Now, every now and then someone like Century Arms 
We'll bring in like a group of a State Arsenal 26 Type 56s, which are actual military SKS. Uh, but in terms of the good old days of the Polytechs and the Rinkos, unfortunately, guys, those days are just gone. All right, guys, we got the gun topped off. Got a couple of stripper clips here. Uh, I'm just gonna try to have a little informal fun here. And uh, we got some steel set up from shootsteel.com out at various distances, 200 on out to about three and a quarter. All right, give it a try. It's connecting pretty well at 200. Let's try 250. Just low. Just low. There you go. Not bad. Tell you what, let's see if we can connect with some of those soda bottles down there, left over from the cannon shoot. They still down there? Yeah, you've got some high C, some hominy. Oh, okay. Let's see if we can wax a couple of those. Uh, are our viewers at home gonna be able to see the carnage down there? Or? I think so. Okay, let's try it. Just to the left of the hominy. Just low. Bring it up. There you go. Oh. Oh yeah. What's that under it? Hominy. Just low. Just left. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Dead center. 200 yards. What's that over on the left side of the stand? Is that another one? You got a high C and a hominy. Ooh, right in between the two. Just in the tie below the hominy. Just in between the two again. <laughs> okay, I see how it is here. Certainly slinging them in there. I know, man. You gotta, you gotta keep your hominy in order when you're around this thing now. I'm gonna get that can of hominy. It's about 200 yards, a little over 200 yards away. Just low. Just low? Just low. Just low and left in the tie. Right in between the two again. I'll be dang. That one skewered a little high. I think you're getting anxious there. Right in between the two. I'll be dang. Well, you got his neighbor. <laughs> I got his neighbor. All right, let's try a few at 300 here. Right. Uh, just low below the plate. Windage was perfect. Just low again in the uh, in the dirt. Good. Good. Boy, it slings them in there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, guns shooting pretty nice here. Um, we're going to proceed to shoot a little bit more because it's just so much fun. I'm going to try to pick up the pace and uh, see if we can't maybe do a little bit quicker here. Low left. Low left.
Low left. Just under. Good. Oh yeah. <laughs> A little Chinese battle axe here, man. Boy, I tell you what, I can never get enough of an SKS. These things are just so great. And guys, a lot of those shots are out to 300 yards. Now, granted, we're sitting at a bench here. We're shooting from a bench rest. You know, I don't know if I'd be able to shoot it quite that well, just running around from the prone or something like that. Now, if I had a good prone unsupported position, not a problem. Um, most human beings generally, just the way we're set up, we generally shoot quite well from the prone. Uh, supported. It's a very natural body position uh, when we get behind a rifle. So I can see where a gun like this would be incredibly handy for three 400 yard engagements. Now I know there's going to be those tactical guys out there that go, oh well, you can't shoot someone at 400 yards with an SKS. I beg to differ. It just comes down to being comfortable behind a given weapon system. I suppose my gripe there, I'm going to do a little mini gun gripe here, is that a lot of folks tend to, they go, okay, well, if you can't do it with an AR, well, well why worry about it? Why not just use an AR uh, to do that? Well, that's fine. Some of us can't afford ARs. Some of us, uh, we might only be able to get behind an SKS. But if all those guys out there that got all macho about black rifles, if they decided, okay, well, I'm gonna give as much attention and care to learning how to shoot this as I do any other gun, well, then it wouldn't be an issue of the gun, would it? It'd be an issue of you just being able to shoot or not. If the ammunition can provide the capability you need to see, if the gun can do it, uh, well, then by all means, it's possible. Um, is that to say that I would probably rather go to combat with several other guns? Well, well, yeah. If, if I have my choice, sure. Scar Heavy, FAL, something like that. You know, sure. There's probably a number of other guns I would prefer uh, in a combat role over this, but for the price, you, you really can't turn down these little guns for what they are because they really will deliver the goods uh, if you really take your time to learn your way around them. Uh, they really are great guns. And uh, I, I guess I would have to say if, if we want to talk about pros and cons, and this is very quick and informal here, but I would say the pros of the gun would be um, that it's very lightweight, it's handy, the sight radius is respectable for what it is, the iron sights are consistent, they stay dead on, uh, when you set them up just right, they're very reliable. Um, it does use a form of short stroke um, gas piston operation. It has a long um, piston that's in here that actuates against a small piston against the, uh, against the carrier itself. So I guess it's, it's a long stroke style gas piston, but the piston actuates against a small spring loaded piston inside of this uh, block in front of the chamber here. So very reliable system. Uh, very easy to keep clean, very easy to uh, maintain. Uh, cons, I would say some folks don't like the heavy triggers. Uh, the triggers do leave a little bit to be desired. Um, the guns, some people might not like the magazine capacity being only 10 rounds. If you're like me and you're buying something like this as a historical rifle, then who cares? It, it's just, it is what it is. You're not going to complain about an M1 Garand holding eight rounds. Uh, because it's an M1 Garand. Well, an M1 Garand holds eight rounds because it's an M1 Garand. So this gun is no different. All these guys that put all the extended mags on, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've got some of the Tapco 20 rounders. They're cool. Uh, a quick word on, uh, on accessories. There are a ton of accessories out there for the SKS guys. Everything from stocks, um, side arrangements, you've got different scope mounts. Uh, I mean, you've got guys like me that'll do trigger jobs for you. Uh, some of you guys can chime in if you've had my trigger job service before, but uh, I can do a mean trigger job on this thing. So the triggers do lend themselves to being worked quite well. Um, ATI is making some excellent replacement stocks. Tapco is making some excellent magazines for these things. Uh, if you're looking for a 20-shot box, um, replacement uh, 922R compliant parts like gas pistons, and hammers and all different type of things that you can get they're us made to bring your parts count up if you're wanting to change a bunch of stuff on it um, so the gun's not doing bad i'm going to get chad behind it because uh chad is a pretty mean shot behind a rifle and uh, i'm really curious to see how well he handles this little thing um, 
Would it be my go-to for precision work? Eh, if it, over an AK, yes. I can see where a lot of soldiers uh, would certainly like this gun over an AK-47 just because it, it does have that nice handling quality to it. It's very lightweight and a very rugged firearm. So I'm gonna let Chad have a go and uh, we'll close this video out. But I just wanna showcase this gun because to me it's very important um, to show off things like this you know, why one would want a gun like this and why one would want a gun like the Type 26 or the uh, Type 56 uh, of the State Arsenal 26. So let's move on. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a few shots with the Norinco here and just see what I can do. I'm gonna shoot from the bench a few times. I might try a few shots at the smaller targets out there at about 300 yards. And um, I think we'll probably do something from the prone. Eric was talking about shooting from the prone quite a bit. So kind of piqued my interest and I, I wanna give it a whirl, just prone unsupported and see what we can do with this little gun. Load it up here. Yep. All right, let's see what we can do. Start at two and walk my way up. <clears throat> All right. Up to three. Just under it. Low right. Low right. Yep. One of the things I love about SKS is these stripper clips work exceptionally well. All right, I'm gonna go for three a couple more times here. Get a little bit better hold on this thing. Low right. Low right. Hit the chain. There you go. Low left. Hmm. Low left. Yeah, bring your hold up a bit. Okay. Certainly not bad though, it's slinging them right in there. Good. That's how you do it, people. Who says an SKS can uh, sling them in there? All right, guys, we got a Ho Chi Minh lunch battle going on here between Chad and I. See who can shoot the plate 10 times in a row, prone unsupported 300 yards. We'll see how it goes here. All righty, I'm gonna do my best. Little gun is not shooting too bad today, but we'll see if I can deliver the goods. Not too bad, missed a few times, but certainly goes to show that from the prone, unsupported even 300 yards, an SKS will definitely uh, deliver the goods with enough time behind the gun, get used to it. We're gonna let Chad have a go. I think I missed three times. Not too bad, but we'll see how Chad fares. All right. All right, guys, Eric got seven out of 10 on that last round. Let's see if I can fare just a little bit better. 22 inch round, 300 yards.
Low right, Chad. Got it. About two inches off the bottom quadrant. Good. Little on the high side, but well centered. Just off the bo on the bottom of the plate. Good. You know, instead of lunch today, I think I'm just gonna take this rifle. Hope you guys had a good time. Stay tuned for more. We've got a lot more mill syrups in the pipeline. I'm gonna run away with this rifle before Eric gets me.